Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Yes, yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition, another episode of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. I am your host, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, Michelle St. Patrick Hewitt. And welcome, people. We've got a special one planned. I want to call it a quick one, but I don't know if it is, but it's definitely a special one planned. We have reached the end of the West Indies domestic Red Bull Championship. The Guyana Harpy Eagles have been crowned the champions, which is their sixth title in the last 10 seasons. Barbados, of course, are the only other team to win a title in those uh, last 10 seasons as well. The, the Guyana Harpy Eagles reclaim the title that they hadn't won in the previous two seasons. And they were deserved winners. Unbeaten throughout the five-round season. The Wimmer Islands were unbeaten as well. But uh, Guyana picked up more kind of like fast bowling points across the season and so on and so forth. And also... Um, the Wimmer Islands drew twice, whereas Guyana only drew once, which was against the Wimmer Islands, actually. Um, and potentially, possibly, the Wimmer Islands will probably look back at that game in round two where um, Kevin Sinclair and who was it? Was it Ronsford Beaton? Um, managed to hold out for what seemed, was it about an hour's play at the end? Guyana held on to reach 250 for nine. And try as they might, Wimmer Islands could not snare that last wicket. Ultimately, the championship came down to that game because if Wimmer Islands had got that final wicket um, and Kevin Sinclair hadn't played that magnificent rear guard innings, I think it was like 70 odd not out or 60 odd not out, um, Guyana would, end, sorry, Wimmer Islands would have ended up winning the championship. But as was noted at the beginning of this season's uh, domestic championship, it was shortened. I say shortened, I mean, last year's um, season was five rounds only as well. But it was shortened to five rounds because Cricket West Indies had, had announced prior to this season's competition that they were introducing a brand new concept. And for those who don't remember, after this five-round championship has ended, beginning on April the 18th to uh, the 6th, 6th sorry, of May, there will be three further four-day matches. There will be, And these will be competed by the following three teams. There will be a team Headley and there will be a team Weeks who have been named in honour, of course, of George Headley and Everton Weeks. And they will be selected from the best performers in the 2023 West Indies Championship and players outside the current starting West Indies Test 11. The final team to comprise this tri-series tournament will be the new West Indies Academy, who will provide the third team. Now, of course, some of the current West Indies Academy have been playing for their franchise teams within the Headland Weeks competition. We have to assume that they will now go back to the West Indies Academy team um, and a West Indies Academy side will therefore compete in this tri-series um, tournament. So effectively what you're looking at is the best 22 slash 24 players from uh, this year's Red Bull Championship, along with, I say along with, within that 24 players, there will be a select few players who weren't able to play in this West Indies Championship, probably due to West Indies duty, who are currently outside the West Indies Test 11, who are also eligible for selection. They will form two teams. West Indies Academy will be the third team and they will all play each other twice. And at the end of playing, so three more games in essence, and at the end of that, uh, a winning team will be announced. Whether you agree with this um, change in the format of the, the Red Bull season and the Red Bull Championship, well, that's that's for another video. I've, I think, in fact, I've done a video on it talking about why I thought this was actually a good thing to do. And quick, if you haven't watched that video, you can go back into the archives. I think I titled it Why the, the Headley Week Series is the Best Thing for West Indies Cricket. Because fundamentally, what we've effectively created at the end of this five-round championship is a best versus best scenario from the actual competition. And I've got nothing, I've got nothing against it for the simple reason that if you were one of the best performers in this year's championship, 
you earn your way through to. Let's almost call it like an all-star set of games where you get to play against the best within the, within the region. And as Cricket West Indies pointed out, those performances will make will essentially form the bulk of the players who then go on to play the the A team series, which at this moment in time I believe is scheduled to be um, against Bangladesh in Bangladesh. I hasten to add that is yet to be confirmed, but that is my understanding as things currently stand. I've heard some rumours about South Africa instead. I don't know. We have to await for official confirmation, but there will be an A team tour after this Headley Week series and prior to the arrival of India for the uh, all-format series in July and August. So effectively, we've got April for the Headley Weeks Tri-Series and then May and June for an A-team tour, which I believe is going to Bangladesh. So what I wanted to do, upon looking at this year's championship, um, <laughs> we had a bit of banter with the, the, the official West Indies Twitter handle. And I think about a day before Guyana had essentially won the the four day championship they they tweeted us and said so what is your your what would what would make up your your 22 24 players for the headley versus week series and i aired them i didn't reply santoki had replied after round 4 and i had always i just aired i never got involved because i was always waiting for the end of round 5 before making my my two teams so what i want to do now people is tell you who i would pick and if you think I'm lying, here's my teams. I've made it here. Um, who I would pick in the team, uh, the Headley Week series in terms of the 12 players. So I've got, I've actually got 11 players and one reserve. I'm probably, me, I'm probably, a, or I think it's probably likely that it'll actually be 26 players. So 11 on either side and two extra reserves. Because if you've got two extra reserves, so a 12, a 12 man and a 13th man, they can come in for the second game for either Headley Weeks um, series as well. But I've picked, just to just to explain, I've picked 11 players for either side and I've picked one reserve only. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, get at me in the comments below. I'm fairly certain that no one, that I doubt there will be anybody watching this video or listening on the audio platforms that will agree 100% with the teams that I have picked. But But this is my selection. Firstly, Team Headley. So for Team Headley, and it doesn't matter, obviously, it could have been Team Weeks, I've got Shane Mosley and Zachary McCaskey as the two openers. And I want people to get a notepad and paper. I think you should write this down. I haven't even put it on the screen. I want you to write this down as I go along so that if you're going to cuss me and say, how could you have picked this person or how have you picked that person, you can see my rationale uh, for why. So I've got the two uh, Bayesian openers who will both go into Team Headley. For me, so that's McCaskey and uh, Mosley. In this year's competition, Shea Mosley scored 355 runs at an average of 36 with 102 50s. Zachary McCaskey scored 303 runs at an average of 34 with two 50s in there with a top score of 92. So I've got the two Bayesians opening for Team Headley. Opening for Team Weeks. I've got Kieran Powell and one of either Matthew Nandu or Kamani Melius. This one was far harder to do, okay? Because I was scratching my head going, who's the second opener for team weeks? But I've gone for Matthew Nandu or, or Kamani Melius. And if you're wondering why I've gone for one of those two is because I'm on... Nandu's not in the academy. So he's not going to get a position in the academy side. Uh, and I can't remember. I don't believe that Melius. I don't believe that Melius is in the academy side either. If I'm wrong, get at me in the comments below or at me on Twitter and Instagram at Kyle Cricket. So I think one of those two youngsters should open with Kieran Powell. Kieran Powell scored 347 runs. He always produces at the domestic level. 347 runs at an average of 35, 100 and 250s. So Powell opens for me. Um, and just to clarify. The top three openers in the region this year were Mosley, Powell, McCaskey, and then Nandu. So we haven't got a lot to go on here. Now, the reason why I've put Nandu or Melius, Nandu played all five games for Guyana, 273 runs at 27, 
100, 150. He started the tournament well and then tailed off badly. Remember, he got 126 in, in one of the opening rounds of the competition and he only made 273 runs over the remainder of the competition in terms of total aggregate. So he tailed off badly uh, for the rest of the tournament. But if you're picking Nandu, you're picking him on his potential of being a 19-year-old who scored 273 runs in the season. The reason why I've got Kamani Melius is Kamani Melius, of course, scored 192 runs right at the beginning of the season, but he was only able to play three matches because injury licked him down. So I've kind of got Melius in there as a nod to the fact that he scored 192. And if I'm not mistaken, that 192 was the top score in the whole competition. So you can't really ignore a man who got the highest score in the competition this season and who, of course, opens as well. But he was only able to face six innings out of the 10 across the season because injury got the better of him. So I've got Nandu or Melius being the openers for team weeks alongside Kieran Powell. By all means, get at me in the comments below if you disagree with one of those picks. In the number three position for Team Headley, I've got Kavem Hodge from the Wimmered Islands. Kevem Hodge scored 387 runs and av at an average of 39, 100, 250s, a top score of 137. And at number three for Team Weeks, I've got Darren Bravo, the second highest score in the competition this year, 446 runs at an average of 56, 200s and 150. Um, I mean, second highest run score in the competition this year, second highest average in the competition this year. Some will say, what about... Shane Dowrich, uh, Dowrich has got that off the back of several not outs. Uh, so I don't, I mean, okay, fine. Dowrich averaged 58, but you know what I mean? So um, Bravo is the number three for team weeks. I don't think either of those two picks warrant any kind of massive introspection. Number four for team Headley and captaining team Headley is Alec Athanase. Alec Athanase needs no explanation. 600, the top run scorer this season, 647 runs at an average of 65, 200, 200 and 450s, the clear standout batter in, in the domestic championship this season. It is almost a no brainer that Alec Athanase should be replacing at someone in the West Indian top six. I don't know who. I don't really care who it is. It could be Chase. It could be Blackwood. It could be Mayers. Um, it could be Reefer. I don't know who. But what I do know is Alec Athene should be making his test match debut against India later this summer. Um, but for the he's certainly in the Headley Week series and he will bat at number four and he will captain. I should also point out that Bravo is for me is captain in team weeks because obviously he was a TNT um captain. At number four for team weeks, check this out, people. <laughs> Shea Hope. At number four for team weeks, I have Shea Hope. Now, before people say how can you have Shea Hope? He didn't even play in the competition. Go back and read the press release that Cricket West Indies put out when they explained what the Headley Weeks format was going to be. They said, Team Headley and Team Weeks will be selected from the best performers in the 2023 West Indies Championship and players outside the starting West Indies Test 11. I have Shea Hope in there. I hasten to point out I have no current West Indian internationals in either side because I don't think they should get a pick. So no Tej, no uh, Jermaine Blackwood. They've just come off successive test series in Zimbabwe and um, and South Africa. That Why would they take up a place, irrespective of performance? So we weren't able to see Shea Hope or Brandon King in this year's West Indies Championship due to white ball duty that they had. Therefore, I am creating a place for Shea Hope and Brandon King. So Shea Hope bats number four for team weeks. If you disagree with me, get at me in the comments below, at me at Twitter and Instagram, car at Carib Cricket. Number five for team Headley. Same reason I just said Shea Hope, Brandon King. So Brandon King gets a spot for team Headley. He has to play. He has to. I d actually, I don't care who comments. I'm not. If you comment below in this video and say, how could you pick Brandon King? I'm not even going to reply to you. How about that? Because... I'm talking logic and sense here. How else are we going to get a look at Brandon King? How else are we going to force the selector's hands in terms of thinking about him in test cricket if we do not play him in the Headley versus Week series? Brandon King can't just sit at home for no reason. He's not in IPL, so he must play, of course. Brandon King is in uh, at number five for Team Headley. Number five for Team Weeks, uh, Sunil Ambris. 
So Neil Ambrose has returned um, after a long time out from West Indies cricket due to reasons that um, I have not got full clarity on, although I think I do know. But either way, this season, he was the sixth highest, fifth highest, sorry, run score in the competition. 363 runs at an average of 45 uh, with three 50s in there, top score of 79. Uh, so I have Sunil Ambrose in there. And what's quite interesting to me is when you look at the top five run scorers in this year's competition, Alec Athenay's one, Darren Bravo two, Leon Johnson three, Kevin Hodge four, Sunil Ambrose five. All of those players have either played for West Indies before, um, in the case of Bravo, Johnson uh, and Ambrose, or they've been in squads in the case of Athenaise and Hodge. So it's kind of disappointing to me. And in fact, if you go to number six, Shea Mosley, he's played for West Indies. Number seven, Kieran Powell, he's played for West Indies. So the top seven run scorers in this year's competition have all either played for West Indies or they're, they're, they're in current West Indies squads or been in previous West Indies squads. So it's kind of disappointing to me that really and truly no new names put their, their hat uh, put their kind of um, hat in the box. Why am I saying hat in the box? But no no new names put their hands up to kind of say, pay attention to me, in my mind. So I've got Sunil Ambris at number five. At number six, um, this is a bit controversial. And this is, this is the first selection I've got where I think people rightly should get in the comments below and say I disagree with that. At number six for Team Headley, I've got Kemal Sav uh, Savary from Guyana. And apologies if I pronounced his surname wrong. I should have checked that beforehand. Now, Kemal have played all five matches for Guyana. Uh, he scored 269 runs at an average of 34 with 150 um, and a top score of 101 not out. Now, he also scored a 44. I mean, I... This one was a controversial one because I was basically looking for an... I, I struggled to find a number six for both sides. Initially, I was looking for an all-rounder. And when you hear who I've picked for Team Weeks, you might understand why I've picked the person I've picked for Team Weeks. So my initial justification was number six has got to be an all-rounder. And then I couldn't find a suitable one or nobody that I thought should be batting that high who has all-round credentials or and, and had done well enough uh, in the domestic championship for me to think, yeah, they could bat number six. So after I'm in an R in, I was like, well, Kemal Savary, first time he's really, really played on the domestic scene properly. Um, let me give him a go. Because remember as well, people, when picking this Headley Week series, you've also got to look at some new names. You can't just pick tried and tested. So if some of you will be sitting there now going, wait, you didn't pick Leon Johnson? No, I didn't. What's the point? Leon Johnson has retired from domestic duty for Guyana. He's gone out in a blaze of glory. Picking someone like Leon Johnson is just taking someone's position up. And similarly, some of you might say, oh, but what about um, uh, Jason Mohammed? He scored 268 runs at an average of 34 with 350s. Yeah, but Jason Mohammed is, how old is he now, 36? Uh, let me just double check. Jason Mohammed is 36 years old. There's no point in picking a Jason Mohammed. He's taken someone's position up. So I couldn't pick someone like a Jason Mohammed either. So you've also got to bear in mind, people, that some of these selections are about age and about potential and what they could maybe bring to West Indies in the future. So I decided to have a look at Kemal Savary at number six. And then for team weeks, I did pick an all-rounder. Um, despite their team being the worst team in the competition, the, the Jamaica Scorpions, I've picked Abajai Mansing to play at number six. He batted at number six uh, for the Scorpions throughout the tournament. Um, and Mansing scored, so, uh, sorry, let me go. Mansing scored 248 runs at an average of 28 with 350s. Um, his strike rate was 32. He loved to occupy the crease. Uh, I think... Of all the top scorers in the competition, Mansing had the slowest strike rate um, in the competition. But he needed to because it was such a weak Jamaica side with the bat that Mansing, more often than not, was the one player in the team who put any kind of value on his wicket. So when you look at Mansing's contributions in this year's competition, uh, 56, 62, not out, 27, duck, 1, 58, 12, duck, 32. Now, I'm not saying it's brilliant. Far from it. Again, I was looking at the fact of I want the number six to be an all-rounder. So I've picked Mansing on potential. And why have I picked Mansing as well? 
because he bowls leg spin people. That's the other reason why. So I want, I want to have a closer look at Mansing. So I've got Mansing um, in at number six. So like I say, 248 runs, an average of 28. Yes, I know that's subpar uh, for a number six. But then I had to consider the fact that he's an all-rounder. Um, and Mansing took 12 wickets at 29 um, in the competition with his leg spin. Now, to me, Mansing is a better, based on what I've seen, I think Mansing has better, um, what do I want to say here? I think Mansing has better leg spin capabilities than uh, than Yannick Karaya. Yannick Karaya could be an outside pick, by the way, because he's also another player outside the current West Indies Test eleven who they may want to have a look at. But I also just went with the fact that Mansing's 25. And again, for me, Headley versus Week should also be about picking players based on potential. So I've got Mansing at six. My two wicket keepers. Uh, for Team Headley, I've got Tevin Walcott. 253 runs, an average of 36 with 250s. I thought he kept well um, for the um, for the Wimmer Islands, um, the, the young Bayesian. I say young Bayesian, it's 28, but that's... That, <laughs> basically young in West Indies cricket. So I've got Tevin Walcott um, as the wicketkeeper for Team Headley and the wicketkeeper for Team Weech, Shane Dowrich. I think that's a no-brainer. I don't... should So Dowrich averaged 57 this year. Um, 230 runs at an average of 58, in fact. Uh, 100, 150. Those... That average, though, is off the back of Dowrich having four not outs. So I don't know how realistic that kind of average of 58 is but it's Shane Dowrich he doesn't need an explanation he gets into into my team weeks and then the construction of the bowlers goes as follows for the bowlers I've gone one spinner on both sides and three fast bowlers so hear me out here because I'm going to get I'm going to get cussed now by um some of the Guyanese fans no doubt based on who I've left out for team Headley. My bowl. I'm just picking. I'm just telling you the bowlers now. For Team Headley, my bowlers are Rakim Cornwall, big rack, big Jimbo. Of course, I'm not explaining nothing. Just obviously Rakim Cornwall, and then the three seamers, um, Akeem Jordan, Jair McAllister, and Ryan John. So those are my three seamers for Team Headley. Just to give people the stats for the seamers. Um, so. Uh, Akeem Jordan, 22 wickets at 17. Obviously, he's now on the cusp of the West Indies squad. Um, Jair McAllister, uh, he bowls at some serious clicks. He may well be the fastest in the Caribbean um, right now outside of the test squad. Jair McAllister, 18 wickets at 19 uh, for Barbados. And then Ryan John started the tournament well and then tailed off. So I'm, I'm picking him based on potential here. 14 wickets at 17. Um, and he was quite economical, Ryan John. So, and he only played four matches. He didn't actually play um, all five matches. So I've I've picked Ryan John there just because I think he's the next best seamer you could go for, for the Headley, team Headley side. And then for team weeks, my spinners are, I say spinner, is Kevin Sinclair a spinner or a slow bowler? Either way, I've picked him. Now, some will say, oh, Mash, you should have picked Kevin Sinclair as an all-rounder at number six. No, I'm not having Kevin Sinclair back number six. So Kevin Sinclair actually scored 285 runs. It's an average of 32 with 250s. But I've got him at number eight in the same way that Raheem Cornell also scored 250s in the competition as well. So I've got Kevin Sinclair, who took 18 wickets at 17 for the Harper Eagles. So he gets in at number eight. And then my seamers for team weeks are Marquino Mindley, 19 wickets at 18. Niall Smith, 18 wickets at 20. And then just for variation, initially I had Sherman Lewis in, um, who returned to the Wimmered Island side after um, injury. Played up, He was only able to play three matches, but he picked up 11 wickets at 18. And I had him in initially. And then I thought, well, actually, let me go for the very the the kind of left arm seamer instead, and I went for Preston McSween, who took fifteen wickets at twenty six. Now, of course, for the Wimmer Islands, both Ryan John and Sherman Lewis arguably outbowled Preston McSween, but I've gone for Preston McSween's left arm pace, and I think he was generally consistent throughout the tournament. And Preston McSween has generally speaking been a very consistent bowler in regional cricket, so I've gone for his. Uh, 15 wickets at 26 instead. 
And then my two or my two 12 men for Team Headley for Sammy Permol. Now, obviously, some people are going to cuss. They're going to say, Mash, for Sammy Permol to, was the second highest wicket taker in the competition, 28 wickets at 15. How can you possibly leave out someone for at 28 wickets at 15? Well, well, I have there. I just, I just, I don't know. I just think Kevin Sinclair deserves a chance. You're not, we're not leaving out Jimbo, obviously. And you're not going to put, I don't think it's the right thing to do to put two spinners on both sides in a starting 11. I think it's got to be one spinner each. And I just thought Jimbo's the top wicket taker. He must get in. And Kevin Sinclair has had a really good competition. He's much younger than Vasami Permo. I think he, he deserves to be, to have a further look at. We know what Vasami Permo already does. Um, he played test cricket more recently than Jimbo. So Jimbo gets to looking for me. So Permo has to ride the bench for me, but he's part of the squad. And then on the other side for team weeks, the reserve I've got is Justin Graves. So Justin Graves with his kind of medium pace swing bowling. Again, he was very good at the start of the competition, tailed off a bit, but I've picked him based on his all round contribution. Uh, so Graves scored 154 runs at 26 with 150. I mean, that's very average, uh, but he, if in, in this side, he'd be batting number eight anyway. And then with the ball, Graves took 16 wickets at 16 for the Wimmered Islands. Um, so I, I've gone for Justin Graves as the um, as the number 12 for team weeks. So there you have it, people. That's my side. I hope I've given the rationale for, for, for the names that I've picked. I'll put them in the description below. So just, just to go through one more time. So for Team Headley, Shay Mosley, Zachary McCaskey, Kevem Hodge, Alec Athenay's captain, Brandon King, Kemal Savory, uh, Tevin Walcott, Rakeem Cornwall, Akeem Jordan, Jair McAllister, Ryan John, and the 12th man is for Sammy Permol. For Team Weeks, Kieran Powell, one of Matthew Nandu or Kamali Melius, Darren Bravo, captain, Shay Hope, Sunil Ambris, Abhijay Mansingh, Shane Dowrich, Kevin Sinclair, Marquino Mindley, Niall Smith, and Preston McSween, with the 12th man being um, Justin Graves. That's my two teams for the um, Headley versus Weeks tri-series, which begins on April the 18th and goes all the way through to the 6th of May. So three four-day matches will be played, Headley versus Weeks, Headley versus the Academy, Academy versus Weeks, and then a, uh, a winner will be announced. And then from all that, the idea is, is that an, a West Indies A side will be selected to go on tour before the Indians get here. People, that's been another edition, another episode of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. I think this one will definitely encourage some lively debate. Uh, please make sure that before you comment or send me some ats at Carib Cricket or in or in the YouTube comments, go and do your research. Don't just send me stuff based on your emotional utterances. I'm going to question you if you give me some names and there's no evidence or reasoning to justify why you're giving me that name. You know me. I'm a stats man. I'm a data man. I'm an, I'm an analytical guy. I need to hear valid justification before you question my pick. So make sure you, you come with that evidence in the comments below and I'm willing to hear that and potentially overturn some of my picks. As ever, like, share, subscribe uh, to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. Um, send this to whoever you think would like to listen to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Help us on the road to 5K on YouTube. And of course, as I always say, if you'd like to support the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, head to www.patreon.com forward slash Caribbean Cricket and you too can help keep our movement growing. I'll be Michelle St. Patrick here at one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Thank you and good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans.